early infantile epileptic encephalopathy. Here, epileptic means seizure disorder. Encephalopathy means brain dysfunction, often due to damage. So, in general, epileptic encephalopathy is a condition where the epileptic activity is responsible for the severe and permanent brain impairment and behavioral changes. Also, the early infantile refers to the age of onset of disease, which is usually between the first three months of life. Our nervous system is made up of specialized cells called neurons, which receive and send electrochemical signals from other neurons. The two neurons communicate at the synapse, where one neuron sends neurotransmitters to the next neuron. Neurotransmitters are called chemical messengers of the body. They are used by the nervous system to send signals between neurons. Now, an excitatory neurotransmitter like glutamate promotes the generation of an electrical signal by binding to certain receptors on the surface of the receiving neuron, which cause it to open the ion channels and relay the electrical signal. While on the flip side, inhibitory neurotransmitters like GABA dampen the electrical signals by closing the ion channels after the electrical signal has been relayed. Maintaining the balance of excitation and inhibition within the neural circuit is important throughout our lives, especially during the developmental stages. Regardless of the cause, the neurons or clusters of neurons that are now impaired start sending out a ton of excitatory signals over and over again. This is uh, due to either too much excitation or too little inhibition at their synapse, which are basically two sides of the same coin. Not to mention the fact that for some reason the defective neurons tend to fire synchronously, meaning at the same time and excessively. So this amplified discharge overstimulates parts of the brain and generate abnormal signals, which results in a seizure. Although the exact mechanism is not known, it has been observed that the repeated firing of neurons during these seizures can cause changes in the synapse, which interfere with the normal impulse conduction. Also, as EIEE manifests at an early age, the abnormal firing during sleep can affect brain areas involved in memory and learning. The end result, severe and permanent impairment in the brain and delay in developmental milestones like sitting and babbling. The most common causes of EIEE include structural brain abnormalities like hemimegal encephaly where one half of the brain is larger than the other, absence of the corpus callosum which is a large fiber bundle connecting the left and the right hemispheres, and dysplasia, an abnormal development of cerebral cortex. Other causes include metabolic disorders like non-ketotic hyperglycemia and mutations in the genes coding for normal development of the neurons. These include the ARX or Aristis related homeobox gene and STXBP1 or syntaxin binding protein 1 gene. Seizures are the most primary outward manifestations of EIEE and infants with EIEE are typically presented with seizures within the first 3 months of life, often in the first 10 days. The seizures can occur during wakefulness and sleep and they may last about 10 to 20 seconds but there may be about 100 seizures per day. They are usually generalized tonic-clonic seizures which means that the muscles in the trunk and extremities suddenly become stiff, the tonic phase, and then jerk, the clonic phase. Some individuals might also have myoclonic seizures. Other prominent symptoms include intellectual disability and developmental delay. Now, before moving on, let's uh, recap and discuss what we have learned uh, in this slide. So, early infantile epileptic encephalopathy or EIEE is a disease characterized by unprovoked and recurrent seizures during early infancy, which usually results in brain damage. These seizures may last about 10 to 20 seconds, but there may be more than 100 seizures per day, and they may occur during wakefulness and sleep. Now, as the onset of the disease is the first three months of life, so that is basically the developmental stage of our body.
now as the body is going through a developmental process so is our brain and when the, the neurons are fi being fired abruptly and repeatedly during that developmental phase so obviously it leads to impairments in the brain of the patient and that impairment then give rise to problems like intellectual disability developmental delay and much more which are associated with the impairment that has been caused in this study we will be focusing on the arx gene and the mutations that lead to eiee First of all, this gene is present on the X chromosome with the cytogenic location of XP21.3 with the inheritance pattern of XLR or X-linked recessive. The ARX gene consists of five coding exons and it is a part of a larger family of homeobox gene which acts during the early embryonic development to control the formation of many body structures. The ARX protein plays a major role during the early embryonic development and that is it basically regulates numerous genes which are either involved in the development of pancreas, the testis, the skeletal muscles or the brain. So in simple words the ARX protein is not directly involved in the development of these organs but rather it's it regulates the genes that are directly involved in the developmental processes of these organs. Now as EIEE is a nervous disorder, so let's look at some of the functions performed by the genes that are regulated by the ARX protein and who are involved in the development of the brain. Okay, so some of the functions performed by the genes that are regulated by ARX. Exon guidance, process where the neurons spread out their exons until they reach their appropriate positions or cell proliferation in the forebrain which is the process where greater number of cells are produced in the forebrain due to cell division of progenitor cells. It's actually a major part of forebrain development. We also have GABAergic interneuron development and these are inhibitory neurons and they play a vital role in neural circuitry and activity. And finally neurogenesis which is a process by which nervous system cells, the neurons, are produced by the neural stem cells. Along with these four, it is believed that the ARX protein regulates more than 80 genes which are involved in the development of the brain and none of them would be able to function properly without it. A mutated ARX gene will give rise to an altered version of the ARX protein. Hence the unique structure that gave it its regulatory function is disturbed, leading to decrease in the ARX activity. Some mutation leads to the decrease in the rate of expression as well which depletes the number of ARX to carry out the function. All these factors disrupt the brain development at an early and sensitive stage of life, which is eventually followed by seizures and intellectual disability. A wide spectrum of nervous disorders are associated with certain mutations in this gene, among which indels and SNPs are common. In this study, we will observe three instances of EIEE, each associated with an SNP mutation, and we will observe their contrasting symptoms. Starting with RS38790671015, a missense variant, it is a transversion mutation in the region of exon 5 that encodes a highly conserved residue of the Aristelis domain. It was observed in two male cousins who had a severe form of the disorder. They had onset of severe refractory seizures in early infancy. They had developed hypsarrhythmia and one of them had poor overall growth, but both developed progressive microcephaly associated with intellectual impairment and spastic tetraparesis. Moving on to our second SNP, RS1048947432. It is also a missense variant which is a consequence of a transition mutation in the ARX gene. It was observed in six males from Australian family. 
They had a severe form of the disease termed X-linked myoclonal epilepsy with mental retardation and spasticity. The patients had onset of seizures between 2 and 18 months of age. Now finally, RS3981228540, a stop gain variant. This is a transversion mutation in exon 1 of the ARX gene which leads to a stop codon. Now, the expressed ARX protein is severely truncated because it only has 26 residues and it lacks all the functional domains of an ARX protein. This was observed in two male first cousins with a severe form of EIEE. Both had early onset of refractory seizures and no developmental progress. Diagnosis can be made with an EEG which is done by placing electrodes on the scalp and monitoring the brain's activity. It shows a typical burst suppression pattern where there are bursts of high amplitude spikes alternated with a period of suppressed electrical activity. Also, brain imaging can be done to identify potential structural abnormalities and blood tests can be done to look for underlying metabolic and genetic disorders. Seizures due to EIEE are difficult to treat since they usually do not respond to anti-seizure medication. Corticosteroid therapy with prednisolone or ACTH can help control seizures in some infants. Another option is ketogenic diet which forces the body to use fats instead of carbs for energy which for some reason reduces the rate of seizures. EIEE has a poor prognosis regardless of the treatment. Some children die within the first two years of life and those who survive are left with severe physical and intellectual disabilities. In survivors, there can be a transition of EIEE into other epileptic syndromes as the age progresses.